My name is Emily Bodwin, and I am a pen and ink and watercolor artist and muralist here in Revelstoke. I have been kind of painting for as long as I can remember, but I got into it a little bit more seriously about seven years ago, and I just feel so lucky to have this as my job, <laughs> the dream. I've got a show coming up at the Revelstoke Visual Arts Centre in June, and it's called The Wilds, and it focuses on kind of ecosystem interactions. So it features organisms interacting symbiotically with each other within their ecosystems, the landscapes that house them, and just trying to create uh, a bit of a deeper understanding about what's going on. I will have 26 pieces in the show. It'll run from, for the month of June, from the 3rd till the 25th. And it's very exciting. I've never taken a, this amount of time to create a whole new body of work for something, so it's been very satisfying. I have always been super fascinated by wildlife, the big stuff and the little stuff. And I just remember as a kid thinking I was collecting these stories of how inter organisms would interact with each other and what's the story of the Clark's Nutcracker and the white bark pine? And, What's the story of the bees and the bears and the blueberries? And, um, so I think it's a little bit of a, a privilege to be an artist and I can create things that are beautiful and present them to people that may not usually be interested in slugs <laughs> or moths. Um, and I think that if people have a deeper understanding of the landscapes, then they will want to protect them. Because why would you want to protect something that you don't know or have a story about? I have a few examples of my symbiosis series. So it's exploring the different interactions within ecosystems and how these animals are cooperating with each other to make their living a little bit easier in our mountains. So for me, research is super important. I research things before I put any pen to paper, I spend a lot of time researching. Um, I come from a family of scientists, which is great. They're a, veritable gold mine, <laughs> a lot of biologists. Um, so especially for this series, I researched a ton of, you know, whether it's reading books, looking up things on the internet. Um, I I'm, I'm, have an interpretive guide certification as well, so I'm pretty interested in this stuff just on my own time. And it's very important for me to make sure that things are sort of like biologically, anatomically accurate. I kind of, uh, the outline has to be very bang on for me to be happy and then I can kind of interpret with color or texture or pattern within the animal's body. Kind of these cradled wood panels have sort of come in vogue a little bit more recently in the art world and I love watercolor but I also love just some good old-fashioned really intricate pen and ink um, and I just think it adds a lot to have the wood grain coming through I really love how that interacts with the piece itself. So you buy these panels and then you sand the heck out of them. <laughs> um, I sand them in, in an attempt to close the wood pores completely um, so that nothing bleeds through them. Mm. So that has been a really fun experiment. I'd never really drawn or painted on wood before the show, but I've been getting after it. The first thing I do is draw it on a pretty small scale, just a really simple line drawing. Um, so this was kind of the initial idea for this one. Super simple, kind of looks a bit like a storybook drawing. Um, and that's just to get the shape. And then I transpose that onto a, a larger scale, just with really light pencil strokes, getting the shape and making sure that it's centered properly or moving where I want it to be on the canvas. Um, and then there's that moment where it's just this blank canvas and you put the first black stroke on and then it's uh, off to the races, which is such an exhilarating feeling. They're actually graffiti markers, a Russian or a German graffiti marker brand called Molotow, and they are refillable, which I really like. So that's how I painted this wolf here. So it's kind of my pen and ink style, um, just with a pump tip. So you can get all these really lovely little details with them. And I paint a lot of bears, but for this show I wanted to have a little bit of a departure from that and focus on 
you know, some mega fauna, but some smaller stuff as well. I am a watercolor and pen and ink artist predominantly, and that is just because I'm a bit of a nomad and I love to paint en plein air, which is painting outside in the environment. So with watercolor, you have a tiny little palette. It can fit in your back pocket or your backpack, um, and you can take it up a mountain with you. And I also have started kind of exploring acrylic a little bit more. My ultimate happy place is painting plein air out in the mountains. And for me, the approach is just as important as sitting on the top and painting the, the blisters and the blood and the sweat and the tears and dehydration, whatever you may encounter on your, be it ski touring or hiking or biking, um, really informs the work for me. And I find a lot of joy sitting up on the top, you know, you're cold and you have to pee and you're kind of dehydrated, but just sitting there and capturing the light and the view is a very special, special thing. So this is Balu Pass. When you hike up and look down back into the valley and we've got Connaught Creek there. This one's super colorful because I have this wonderful neurological condition called synesthesia. It manifests in a lot of different ways for different people, but it has to do with your senses. So sensory input with synesthetes, is what we're called, um, activates more than one sense at a time. So for me, words and touch I experience as color. So this was a little synesthesia, uh, I don't know what you call them, vision, feeling, <laughs> experience that I had. Um, so that informs a lot of my work as well.